Hey, today I would like to show you something about chart tables. Very precisely, what I want to show you is how to listen to an event here, like when you click on add row of a chart table. Notice that I am on a library member doc type, and this doc type has a chart table called article, articles borrowed. So when you click on add row here, how do you listen to that event and how i'm going to be showing you this today is by generating an id and setting it up here so i'm going to be showing you two things in that one first is how to listen to the click event of an ad row in a chart table and number two is how to uh, automatically assign an id or something here text it can also be text it can be whatever but in this demo i'm going to be showing you how to add an article id here when you click on the add row all right that is number one number two i'm also going to be showing you how to generate the same id and set it up here when you change the article name all right so for instance i have zero to one if i change it to this it will generate a new id and set it up here so i'm going to be showing you those two things in this video let's jump right into code the first thing that I need to do is to identify which doc type I am into, and this is a library member. So I'm going to open a new uh, uh, a new tab here, and I am going to go to client scripts, right? So in the client script, I have already a script here for library member that I was using yeah, using to show you something else uh, on an earlier date. If you don't have the uh, the script here already, you can just click on add script, search for library member here. For instance, this one you're going to be searching for your uh, your doc type, and then you make sure that this one is enabled, and then you write your script here. All right? Since we already have our script, we just open it, and this is where I'm going to be writing the code. Now, notice that what we have here is a child table, so we are not going to be looking for we are not going to be looking for the, first of all this chart table is called article details i can show you that by going to this uh by going to this this one i'm, I'm into the doc type for library member i customize it and i'm going to be showing you the name of that doc type all right the name of that doc type you can see here is article details and it is sitting on a field called article name so you are not going to be looking for article details because by default frappe hides the uh, you cannot do this because if you do that you see this there's, there's a filter here that says if a doc type is a chart table don't show it here so you are going to be putting your script on the mother doc type which is library remember in our case and then you are going to put your script down here all right down here so which script am i writing here the script looks almost exactly like what is generated here so we can just go ahead and copy this all right if you are very good uh, at typing, you just type frappe.ui.form.on uh, library uh, member, but then in this case, it will not be library member, but rather, we are going to be using the name of our article here, uh, the name of our doc type here, which is, uh, which is article details. Make sure to get the spelling right, both of, uh, 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 the spelling and also the capitalization of that, all right? Then after that, the next thing that we are going to be doing is we are going to be putting in uh, the code that we need, right? So which code are we going to be putting in here? We need to close that. The code that we need to put here, what I'm showing you first is how to listen to the click event and then assign this one at click event, all right? So which code are we going to be putting in here? The code that listens to the click event is a function called form render so we're just going to do form render and then on that form render you're going to call a function and on that function you're going to pass in three parameters the first one is the form the second one is the c d t which ideally is the child doc type and the last thing you're going to be passing here is the cdn which ideally is the child doc name so you're going to be passing the form itself the child doc type and the child doc name all right nice 
after that excuse me after that, the next thing that we are going to be doing here is to write some other piece of code what do we exactly want to do here so for instance if we do console.log now we are going to let's log in something like this is awesome all right something like this is awesome we just want to see whether this one is getting here so let's go back here reload remember to reload this is javascript then pull out your console clear this where is clear whatever console clear okay then click on add row and you can see here it has listened to that event and now it has console logged this is awesome perfect so the first objective is achieved the second objective now is to just assign generate some value so we can even put in something like a value here like uh maybe my name so we can go ahead and do that so let's go back to our script where is our script it's lost oh yeah here is our script remove the console we don't need the console the thing that we need to do here now is to generate an item so i'm going to just to say let item and this item by the way is going to be the row let, let me first of all do this item equals locals and then this is going to be an array all right an array stay with me with the cd uh, cdt and is also going to contain cdn okay now what is this now what this is is the this uh locals you are seeing here is basically a global array all right so this one is a global array and this array uh, contains all the local documents opened by this user so this locals is a global array so you don't need to define it anywhere it is a, a global array and by default it contains all the documents that have been opened by this user all right so when you assign cdt and cdn to this item here this item now contains the row that the user is working with all right so this one already has grabbed the row that the user uh, is working on or uh, from the local cdt cdn uh, uh, array here then after that the next thing that we're going to do is just simple go ahead and assign something to it so we can say item dot what is the name of our field the name of our field the uh, the field that we want to assign something is we need to open that doc type uh where are we here the name of the doc type. let me just open a new tab so that from this tab i can go to the doc type list doc type list and then i'm going to look for article details and from this article details we want to set this article id all right so go back to our script here and we are going to say item remember item is the uh, what we have pulled here item dot article id equals we can just put something here like karani all right and then the next very important thing we are going to do let me first of all save this so that you see if now i come back to my article where are we open yeah here reload it we remove the console so we don't need to uh, use, spend that use that space there open it we don't have anything here but how about when we get out of it we have something all right so look at this again if i click on add row we don't have anything in the article id but when we check out it is there the reason is because we have not refreshed this field so how are we going to do that we refresh that field by simply doing the name of the field and please note this the name of the field is not this one so we we are not going to do let me, let me just show you this we are not going to do something we are going to do form form is the fun, uh, the form uh, item and then we are going to do uh, to say refresh uh, refresh i hope i wrote refresh well yeah refresh and then field and then the field that we want to refresh here is uh now let me first of all put this so that you see this doesn't work now remember note that we want to refresh we want to refresh this field okay this one here this one so because this is where we want to see stuff but note this is a chart table and just no wait, wait and see this is not going to work this is the name of the field we put there it is my article look again uh we have put what article id 
article ID, what is the, yeah, article ID, sorry. Article ID is the name that we have put here to be refreshed. Save it. And when I refresh, this is not going to work because, you see, didn't work, but the name is there. Because normally on, on, on chat tables, what we refresh is the field in the mother doc type that contains this child table. So in our case, the field that we need to refresh is this field, the field that contains this child table. So we go back here and then we refresh this field and save it. And now when we refresh this and do something like that, the name appears. Perfect. So now that is done. If I put do that, I, another one comes. We can do something like uh, something like maybe generate something so that you are, you can see how this works. So we can do something like let me just copy something here to generate some Unix timestamp. So copy this, put it here. So what I have here is uh, the article ID is math dot round. Then the Unix timestamp. And then I want to assign this article ID here. Instead of assigning Karani, I want to assign that. So that you can see it change. Alright. So, refresh it. And now, if I come down here and click, you see we have a timestamp there. We can leave that blank. Click, we have another timestamp. You see, click, we have another timestamp. Nice. So, those ones are now being assigned perfectly. Now, how about... If we want to, maybe, we don't want to generate it at this point. We want every time we change an article name here, we want to generate this and to assign it there. That is now going to be easy. So we can go ahead and comment this code. And that is going to be a different function. All right. So let me go down here. And the function that is going to do that is frappe.ui. I'm going to copy this. Uh, because I did it. Oh, I can just write it uh, for now. Froppe.ui.form.on on on, and the uh, the article uh, the doc tape we want to listen to here is this one. Paste there, and then here we are going to pass in a few more parameters. The first thing that we need to pass here is the field that we are listening to. In this case, the field we are listening to is the article name. So we need to pass the article name here. Uh, again, this one should be in quotes. So pass the article name. And then this is the where we are going now to call our function. All right. And this function is going to take in exactly what we passed to this function. Here. So we can just go ahead and copy this function and put it here. And the first line is done after I've done that. Then I close it. All right. Let me just close this. And I'm going to close it completely. Let me check whether I have some error here because I can see an underline. Frappe.ui.form.on. All right, this is not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be like that. Perfect. So now, once we have done this, everything else that we need to do inside here is exactly what we have from here so i can copy this put it here i'm going to explain this in a, in a, in a little bit so after we have listened to a change of that what we want to do here is let me see format this code just a little bit so we want to listen to the uh, get grab the current row that we are working on then generate some random number listen to this uh uh, assign this item and then refresh perfect save it and let's go ahead and test it so go here refresh our thing and when you open this you notice this one does not have anything i put something generated and assigned how about if i change so if i change this generated another one if i change that generated another one, and that's it perfect so i have shown you how to listen to the click event of this then I also have shown you how to assign something on a charitable field and that done, uh, I also have shown you how to listen to a change in this field and actually assign something on this. So now you can go ahead, if you're using this uh, uh, kind of uh, logic in your application, you can just hide this field now and it will be saved when you're saving your document.
Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.